Dear brothers and sisters, Susan, Sister Gong, and I are grateful to be with each of you today on this special campus. Don't you love fall and a new school year? Some here today are freshmen. Welcome. I learned many things as a freshman. For example, as a new freshman, I learned that, while that was not necessarily obvious to me, most people could immediately tell if I was wearing a collared shirt or a collared pajama top, <laughs> even under a sweater to class. <laughs> Similarly, as a new freshman, I learned detergent and bleach are both used to wash clothes but have quite different effects. <laughs> Some here today are seniors. Welcome to you. You're trying to decide which is harder, graduating or knowing what to do after you graduate. We know how you feel. Some here today are preparing for missions with faith and anticipation, and some are returning for missions with spiritual maturity and significant service and testimony. We thank you. In the rhythm of freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior of missions, of seeking a companion who doesn't get transferred, <laughs> of graduate studies, there is a wonderful sense of our time and our season. Don't you love President Russell M. Nelson? In this month's General Conference, President Nelson promised, if we will do our best to restore the correct name of the Lord's Church, he whose church this is will pour down his power and blessings upon the heads of the Latter-day Saints, the likes of which we have never seen. Across the world, there are only four places where we find in close proximity a House of the Lord, a higher education campus sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and a community of saints seeking learning by study and also by faith. Of course, in every institute, pathway group, or righteous gathering where two or three come together in His name, we delight in seeking after that which is virtuous, lovely, or of good report or praiseworthy. Daily, I am grateful for things I learned and experienced at BYU, sometimes years ago. I could not have imagined then, until I needed them now, how valuable and significant formative BYU lessons and experiences can be. Here's an example. On a recent flight from Salt Lake City to New York City, my seat assignment was changed at the last moment, in this case perhaps not without purpose. I asked my new seat companion if she was traveling to New York or Milano, the plane's final destination. The question opened a conversation. After explaining she had spent her life as a bilingual, bicultural Italian-English translator, she began quizzing me about Italian art and culture. As she queried me about Michelangelo, I remembered a BYU humanities class with Professor Todd Bridge. I was able to say in Michelangelo's statue, the Pietà, the same piece of Carrara marble feels alive and lifeless at the same time. Mary is alive with compassion while the body of her Son, our Savior, hangs lifeless. My airplane companion nodded approvingly. We then talked about the Sistine Chapel, where God's vibrant hand touches Adam's limp hand, and then Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, The Last Supper in Milan. And then Dante. She had studied Shakespeare for five years in London, and she thought Shakespeare might approximate Dante's genius and accomplishment. What did I think? I remembered BYU classes on Shakespeare with Professor Arthur Henry King and others, but diplomatically said, I thought Shakespeare and Dante were both great literary figures. <laughs> then something unexpected happened. Seemingly out of the blue, this good woman quietly asked, You want to know how my son died, don't you? We had been discussing Italian art and literature, 
her language of love. I'm an amateur in that language, but perhaps because I was willing to try to listen with my heart, she felt she could say, my son committed suicide. I'm going to Italy to make arrangements. She then added, I feel you're a man of God. God put you here today because I have no one to talk to about these things. For the rest of the flight, we spoke tenderly about God's plan of happiness, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, how families can be together forever. I testified of ordinances and covenants found in the Holy House of the Lord and invited her to visit the Manhattan New York Temple or someday the Rome Italy Temple. Thank you, BYU, for teaching general and discipline education and the language of the heart. Such enriches our lives and in unexpected times and places allows us to connect with others in ways they understand and value. As I reflect on things that I learned at BYU that bless my life and service today, I imagined a thought experiment. Come with me to the year 2040 and let's look backward from the future. Imagine we are looking back with gratitude on what we learned as students in 2018. The year 2040 is, after all, only 22 years from now, about twice the age of some of you here today. What did we learn in 2018 that we use in value in the year 2040? How did we learn it? Here are four possible 2040 lessons we began learning as students in 2018. First, 2040 lesson. We are learning how to learn by the Spirit. Of course, even in 2040, we are still learning to learn by the Spirit, but we began in 2018, and even then it was not too early. As BYU students in 2018, we're already in the age of acceleration all around us with the reliable predictability of Moore's Law, computing speed, power, and storage capacity increase, relative costs decline, mobile devices, broadband connectivity, and cloud computing connect everything, everywhere, all the time. Smart sensors and the Internet of Things power our global, real-time ecology of distributed information and decision-making. These technological changes hasten the shift in basic economic production from agriculture in the 19th century to industry in the 20th century to information and innovation in the 21st century. As anyone looking for a job knows, today's world puts a premium on ability and agility to learn and apply new things in new ways. Those who can generate scalable intellectual property are rewarded for constantly learning how to shape the future architecture of goods and services. In the midst of fast-paced technological and global changes, in 2018, we began to learn how to learn by the Spirit by doing small and simple things. We began by going to class by choosing friends and environments that encouraged our best learning, and by learning facts, skills, and attitudes. Going to class. As the saying goes, you have to be present to win. Put another way, you have to be present to learn. In person or online, through lecture or discussion, in groups large or small, whatever the learning style, as obvious as it may sound, we learn to learn by gathering for instruction, but we really have to be there. Come prepared to learn, interact to, inter to edify, commit to act. When I was a freshman, I decided I would attend all my BYU classes. I was blessed by doing so. In four years at BYU, I missed fewer classes than I have fingers and thumb on one hand. Choose friends and environments that encourage our best learning. Faculty, staff, libraries, classrooms, 
Each is important, but so is the time we spend with and what we learn from fellow students, friends, and roommates, much of which, as we know, is not in a classroom. I remember a road trip with friends during a BYU break. As we were preparing, I was delegated to take our collected funds and buy a box of copies of the Book of Mormon at the BYU bookstore. I asked, what will we do with a whole box of Book of Mormons? My friend said, we will write our testimonies in each book and share them as we travel. And that's what we did. Choose your friends and associates well, so you learn by the Spirit things you always want to remember. Learn facts, skills, and attitudes. The Greek biographer Plutarch said, The mind is not a vessel that needs filling, but wood that needs igniting. We do need relevant facts, the tinder for the lighting of fires. Elder Neil A. Maxwell liked to quote the Frenchman, La Rousseau Foucault, quote, There goes another beautiful theory about to be murdered by a brutal gang of facts. <laughs> but another wise Frenchman, author of The Little Prince, cautions us not to be fixated on narrow facts. You remember in The Little Fr Prince, the cosmic businessman is concerned with self-important matters of consequence. He has no time for dreaming, even to see the stars he is so obsessed with counting. As students in 2040, we began learning in 2018 how to navigate what some called a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. For us in 2040, we are grateful our time at BYU was a period of intensive learning in a stimulating setting where we learned relevant facts, skills, and attitudes, and dreams which matter by the Spirit of God. In an increasingly VUCA world, our first 2040 lesson is learning how to learn by the Spirit. We say with confidence, quote, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. By the Spirit, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, which are eternal. A second 2040 lesson. We are grateful we began learning at BYU in 2018 how to choose and decide in time how best to prepare for eternity. As students in 2018, adulting was already challenging. But it was only a beginning to the challenges and joys we are juggling in 2040. As students in 2018, we understand limited time, energy, and opportunity require wise decisions among good, better, and best choices. As President Dallin H. Oaks teaches, quote, we have to forego some good things in order to choose others that are better or best because they develop faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen families." End quote. Such perspective helps so the urgent does not drive out the important. In 2018, we are delighted to learn from our own decisions. We are learning the battle to get up in the morning as won or lost the night before. We are learning personal and roommate prayers, having some meals together, putting a copy of the ensign in a visible place, going to the holy temple, and all other regular holy habits change our hearts and our living environments. Attending BYU devotionals and forums is a decision not to let school get in the way of education. Serving in our ward helps us learn from those around us and from the Holy Ghost how to love God and minister. Coincidentally, in such sociality, because we are learning to see others through spiritual eyes, we make wonderful friends and, in some cases, find our eternal companions. On occasion, our Heavenly Father helps us understand how time and eternity can come together 
and futures we cannot see. In our hearts and minds, the Holy Ghost tells us things we need but would not otherwise know. In inspiring, protecting, and guiding us, the Holy Ghost fulfills the promise that all things work together for good to them that love God. In 2018, we began discovering we wanted not only to live a balanced life, but also to strive for a consecrated sacramental life. Now, of course, we must be wise and not run faster than we have strength, and sometimes we must be still and know that God is God. But with planning, increasing capacity, and consecrated effort, we're discovering something miraculous. This world is not simply one of finite sticks and stones, but in the Lord's times and seasons, this world can also be one of limitless loaves and fishes. In a loaves and fishes world, faith, compassion, and blessings are unlimited. So is God's grace and capacity to embrace, magnify, and heal, just as our patriarchal blessings promise. When we sacrifice and consecrate our relatively meagering offerings of a few loaves and fishes, the Lord can take what we give and greatly magnify it to bless others. In 2018, preparing for 2040, we're also learning perfection is in Christ, not in ourselves or in the perfectionism of the world. When we do our best, we can trust in our Heavenly Father's approbation. A third 2040 lesson. We note with gratitude our understanding that we have from various experiences can contribute that global experience that we have to every nation, kindred, and tongue. In 2040, we travel for work, information, and adventure to every country and continent. Some immersive interactions with the world are in person, some in virtual or augmented reality. In any case, we're grateful BYU encouraged us in 2018 to see the world as our campus where we can contribute and serve. In different places with diverse people, I gratefully glimpse how, quote, only the comprehension of the true fatherhood of God can bring full appreciation of the true brotherhood of men and the true sisterhood of women, unquote, as we've been taught by President Nelson. BYU students, as you know better than anyone, come from 50 states and over 100 countries on campus 62 languages are taught and 126 languages are spoken. 65% of BYU students speak a second language. Now in 2040, including with everywhere all the time connectivity, we are bound even more closely to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Part of our 2040 experience is discipline and language. We have learned to speak in the nuance of specific disciplines across cultures, time zones, workflows, and values. We've continued to build on our 2018 experiences with missions, classes, campus associations, internships, and externships to connect to our globalized world of 2040. Paradoxically, in 2040, even with 24-7 transborder flows of capital ideas and people, we're respectful of sovereign entities and cultures protective of their traditions and values. Our fourth and final 2040 lesson, we're grateful for spiritual strengthening at BYU. In 2018, President, uh, BYU President Kevin Worthen taught us, quote, I hope we inspire our students to learn, and I hope that learning leads to inspiration, end quote. In 2018 at BYU, we know the half-life of information is getting shorter and shorter, and that facts, information, knowledge, wisdom, and revelation represent a kind of hierarchy of value. The poet T.S. Eliot put it this way, quote, All our knowledge brings us nearer to our ignorance. 
All our ignorance brings us nearer to death, but nearness to death, no nearer to God. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? The cycles of heaven in 20 centuries bring us farther from God and nearer to the dust." In 2018, we learned from R.G. Collingwood and others that a discipline is ultimately the history of that discipline, be it a field of philosophy, humanities, engineering, or so on. This means there are ebbs and flows, intellectual fads and fashions in fields of inquiry. With the advantage of 2040 hindsight, we are grateful our BYU education gave us perspective and understanding to know we can address some questions and issues now, while other issues or questions may require resolution over time with additional understanding, experience, or information. In this context, we place highest value on divine inspiration, revelation, and truth. As the scriptures tell us, truth is knowledge of things as they are, and as they were, and as they are to come. It's fitting that he who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, knows the truths that make us free. Similarly, we know we can trust God. Each connected element and promise in this verse is significant. Search diligently, pray always, and be believing. And all things shall work together for your good if ye walk uprightly and remember the covenant wherewith ye have covenanted one with another. We are learning this verse is true because the person making its promise knows how all things shall work together and knows what is for our good. Finally, wisdom and judgment invite us to cherish Christ-like attributes. Of many Christ-like characteristics we treasure in 2040, we love the relationships between humility and excellence, between humor and faith. As students in 2018, we began learning from President Henry B. Eyring that our identity as a child of God allows us, quote, to pursue educational excellence while avoiding pride. Indeed, as President Eyring taught, continuing the quote, the way to humility is also the doorway to educational excellence. The best antidote I know for pride, President Eyring says, also can produce in us the characteristics that lead to excellence in learning." End quote. In 2018, we also glimpsed an intriguing relationship between humor and faith. Christian writer Reinhold Niebuhr said, quote, The intimate relation between humor and faith is derived from the fact that both deal with the incongruities of our existence. Laughter is our reaction to immediate incongruities and those which do not affect us essentially. Faith is the only possible response, he says, to the ultimate incongruities of existence, which threaten the very meaning of our life. He continues, quote, humor is, in fact, a prelude to faith, and laughter is the beginning of prayer. Laughter must be heard in the outer courts of religion, and the echoes of it should resound in the sanctuary. But there is no laughter in the Holy of Holies. Their laughter is swallowed up in prayer, and humor is fulfilled by faith." End quote. So, excellence and humility, faith and humor, all are elements of character we associate with the spiritual strengthening we experienced as BYU students in 2018. For me, looking backward from the future is a remembrance of things to come. It is an invitation to prepare now for a future that will be here tomorrow. 
May we learn how to learn by the Spirit. May we choose and decide in time how best to prepare for eternity. May we offer global experience and training to contribute to every nation, kindred, and tongue. And may we seek and rejoice in spiritual strengthening. In doing so, may we become in 2018 st students of faith, intellect, and character who have the skills and the desire to continue learning and to serve others throughout our lives. May your BYU education truly be spiritually strengthening, intellectually enlarging, character building, and lead to lifelong learning and service as you prepare for 2040 and beyond. We can begin today. It may be as simple as deciding to go to class or finding new ways to learn how to learn with the Spirit with humility, excellence, faith, and humor. At the center of all that matters is the reality that God is our eternal Father. Jesus is the Christ, whose atonement blesses us in time and eternity. The Father and the Son did come to the Prophet Joseph Smith, reopening the heavens in restoration and revelation that continues today in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, led by President Russell M. Nelson. The Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ and with the other wonderful scriptures, the Holy Word of God. As I gratefully shared with the grieving woman flying to Milano, I also now testify, quote, sacred ordinances and covenants available in holy temples make it possible for individuals to return to the presence of God and for families to be united eternally, end quote. We seek after these things. I know and testify they are true in the sacred and holy name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.